What's up guys? If you saw the title of this video, you know what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be installing a three row massive radiator in the Z. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give a quick background about what I've done to my cooling system just so you guys are up to date. Um, these are Chevy Malibu fans. Um, you can see there's one big one and one smaller one. I have a video on this if you guys want to go ahead and check that out. I have a video on my setup here for the thermostat. Um, for the relays and everything for the AC so that everything turns on in the correct time. Um, go ahead and check that video out as well. Um, and finally, I have a, I currently have a two-row uh, eBay radiator in it. Um, and I believe it's a still pretty good radiator. I think for a stock car, this would definitely be a good upgrade. Um, but for me, currently I live in New Mexico, which is a pretty hot state. Um, we typically get temperatures of the daytime around 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so it's a little bit warm outside. Um, so what we're going to be doing right now is upgrading from a two row to a three row. And that's because currently when I turn on my AC, I can see my temperature start to rise. Um, I do have an aftermarket coolant gauge, this guy right here, um, that feeds up into one of my gauge pods. And I can see I'm typically around 82 degrees uh, Celsius, um, just regular driving around. But if I turn on my AC, um, it decreases the efficiency because the condenser is actually in front of the radiator. Um, so I ended up getting up to around 93, 94, um, and it really is pushing it a little bit too close to where I'd like to be. Um, New Mexico is just starting to get hot as well, so it is going to get hotter and it's going to be less efficient. So upgrading to a three row is going to be perfect for us. Um, so right here we have, I have it in the box, but you can kind of see it on top here. It is a three row radiator. Now I want to go ahead and talk real quick about this. Um, people will say the Champion radiator is the best one to go with. And I really do agree with that. Um, this one right here is an eBay three row. And the reason I went with the eBay three row is because there have been a lot of people who say the Champion radiator and the eBay radiator are actually made in the exact same place and they're the exact same product. Um, it's just that one of them has a Champion logo on it and the other one is just generic. And if I'm being honest, I believe it. You know, when I take this out of the package and look at it, it looks like a very high quality radiator. The welds are really nice. Um, everything comes out really nice. There's a drain plug here, very high quality metal one, not the plastic stuff that you get. Um, by the way, the two row came with a plastic one and it is leaking. Um, very small amount, but it is leaking. So I'm excited to have this uh, threaded pipe insert here. But yeah, so what we're gonna go ahead and do is install this three row. I'm pretty sure it's the exact same thing as a champion. So we'll go ahead and test the fitment of everything, make sure everything looks good. Um, but the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is come over to the car and we're going to remove our front fender. Um, you kind of have to do this, you can't really get the uh, radiator out because it slots in um, right here and right there. So what we're going to go ahead and do is there's three nuts, one, two, three, that you reach from the inside of the fender well. Um, you can either go from the bottom or take off the fender liner and come in from the side here. And then there is a 10 mil here and a 10 mil down there typically. Um, I don't think I have mine in anymore. And then 10 mil on the side, 10 mil on top. And then also, if you guys can see the front down here, um, up along the bottom, there are typically bolts. I don't know if I have mine anymore um, because of my intercooler. And then underneath here, underneath here, straight upwards, um, there's typically one on this side and then one on that side. Once all those come off, you should be able to get to your, re or your entire front bar off. It really is pretty simple to get it. Just kind of look where it's hanging up and then shake it off. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. You guys already have a video on it if you want to go check that out. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and pull this front bar off and then that should expose our radiator right in front here. Alright guys, as you can see I got the front bumper off. I did forget about the turn signals. Um, they just clip in like this. Go ahead and just push the little clip to pull them out. If, they're get, if they get stuck, just shoot a little bit of WD-40 on them and wiggle them back and forth. It'll come out eventually. It's very simple. Um, they're just plastic connectors. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is grab our jack and we're going to jack up. And the best way to do it is either on the engine cross member, or what I like to use is this tow hook right here, that guy right there. That is on the frame rail. It is a very stable point. I use it to jack up all the time. Um, so don't have to worry about that if you want to do it. I'm going to go ahead and just put this right there, jack it up, and we're going to go ahead and drain the coolant out. Um, if you haven't changed your coolant in a while, it's supposed to be done every 60,000 miles or something. I would go ahead and just get new coolant. You can buy two bottles of this concentrate right here. Um, these are about, I think, $17 a piece for the concentrate. Right here it says concentrate must add water. Um, 
So two of these and then two bottles of just distilled water. These guys right here. And then what you're going to go ahead and do is just mix them 50-50. So I like to have an extra bottle. I usually have an extra one of these guys laying around. I'll dump half of one of these into the extra bottle and then mix that into the extra bottle and then that into the original coolant. Um, and then I have two perfectly 50-50 distilled. And it is a lot cheaper um, to get two gallons of, dis of uh, coolant concentrate to make four gallons of coolant than it is to buy straight up four gallons of coolant. Um, if you don't really care and you don't want to mix it yourself, you can go ahead and buy the 50-50, but it is a lot cheaper to get the concentrate. Um, that's just my advice because I'm always on the hunt for the best, uh, best deal. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and take that off. I'm also going to clip, I have some zip ties on here to hold this fan shroud on. We're going to go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and undo, undo this big hose here. You just have to do it at the bottom um, and then down there as well. We'll probably get that from underneath the car because it is a little bit tight up here. Um, and then we can just go ahead. There's a 10 mil on this side, a 10 mil on the other side. Um, and this actually will just pull straight out. So let's go ahead and do that and see what happens. All right, guys, you can see that we got the old radiator out. Um, I did manage to spill a bunch of coolant, um, and that hose that goes to the engine block is going to constantly drip for the rest of its life. Um, so we're going to try to get this new one in here as fast as possible um, to avoid all the cleanup that we're going to have to do. But, so what we're going to go ahead and do, if you guys remember the fan shroud video that I made, if you watched it, I have to put the fan shroud in first in order to get this to fit, because um, it's a little bit tight down here. Um, so we got this in, and what we're going to have to do is put this in so that we can get over this back piece here. This is the one that goes in the hose to the engine block um, and the fan shroud has to go over it and it is very difficult to get it over. Um, so that's something we're going to have to watch out for. And then another thing is it's got the drain plug right here. You can see I've removed it. Um, and that's because a lot of people told me that they couldn't really get the radiator in without removing it. And I think it's going to be a good idea so we don't accidentally mess up our uh, condenser right here and put a hole in it and lose all of our beautiful AC charge. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to shove this thing in here real quick, um, lose as less coolant as possible, um, and we'll see how it turns out, and I'll let you guys know what worked best. Alright guys, well I can definitely say this was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Um, really, for me, the biggest challenge is always holding this fan shroud up and getting it over the uh, thing at the bottom there. Um, it just doesn't have a lot of room right here. You can see it's pretty much right up against the frame right here. Um, and there was just not any room to get this to move around. Um, so I kind of had to push it back and pull it up. And it took a lot of different kind of work to get it there. Um, but you can see it's in now. Uh, one thing I immediately notice is this tab is kind of bent down, kind of holding it up. This tab is not. You can see this one is up off and this one is down onto it. So I'm probably going to bend this tab up and get this to lay down a little bit more. Um, I've got to go ahead and re-put all my zip ties that I was holding my fan shroud on. Um, really this fan shroud is a great fit. It is actually almost perfect. Um, but the biggest thing is I use the little uh, holes on the side here in order to tie it together. And uh, there's just not a lot of space there because it is just such a perfect fit. Um, you can see now with the new thicker radiator, it just really doesn't have a lot of space on either side here. But overall, I think that this is going to be a great radiator. Um, again, like I said, we need to bend this down so that we can get that gap to be kind of uh, minimized because this is kind of supposed to be sealed off right here so that what we can do is get the air to flow up through the radiator instead of bleeding up and around it. Um, so that is really the only thing. But this is looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead, tidy this up, bend that bracket, and then we'll see where we stand after that. Alright guys, so you can see I got everything all back together. I got this hose on, I got that hose on, I got the uh, drain plug in. Now the one thing that we have left to do is put the bumper back on. But before we do that, the thing I always recommend is to, first of all, um, bleed the system, and then second is to check for any leaks. Um, so we don't have to take everything back apart again in order to get to something. Say it was leaking right here, and uh, we couldn't get to the clamp. This is actually is pretty easy to get to, and that one's pretty easy to get to. Um, but just in case that there's anything difficult, before we put everything back together, we're going to check for any leaks. Um, so the way that you bleed this car is, and it's actually helpful that we have it up on, uh, jack, jacked up like this, you're going to want to raise the front up. Um, that's going to go ahead and help all the air bubbles get pushed to the front here where the radiator and uh, the coolant cap and everything is. We're going to turn the car on. Um, we're just going to wait a little bit and uh, make sure that we get any air bubbles out of there. Um, 
you don't really need to bring it up to operating temperature per se uh, because it will like to kind of bubble out of there if you were to have full coolant in it. Um, you just kind of need a little bit to kind of get the water pump going and any bubbles that are possibly stuck in here kind of moving around a little bit. You could bring it up to temperature if you have one of these things like I do that goes onto your actual coolant cap and you can hold it. This is a really, really great thing to use uh, because then you can actually bring it up to operating temperature, make sure the thermostat opens and everything um, and fully bleed it. Um, but what I'm going to go ahead and do, and you guys can do it too, I've done it before, is to just go ahead, turn it on for a few minutes, make sure any big air bubbles get out, and then go ahead and put the cap back on, and then bring it up to operating temperature. And when we bring it up to operating temperature, what it's going to do is going to expand any of the air that's left in the system here, and then when we turn it off and it cools down, instead of um, leaving that air in the system, it's actually going to get pushed out through this line into our coolant tank, and then when it cools down, it's going to suck coolant back into it. Um, so you would probably really realistically you'd want to do that two or three times. Um, I'm probably going to just do it once or twice because that's typically what your system does is that's what the coolant tank is for. Any air in the system gets pushed out and coolant gets sucked back in. Um, so as long as we bleed it, get any major air pockets out, we will be fine to go ahead and just let the system um, self bleed itself later. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. I'm going to put this intake piece that I have laying here back on, um, bleed the system, and then we'll go ahead and put the bumper back together. Alright guys, so I went ahead and ran the car for about a minute. Uh, when you do that, go ahead and push on the coolant hose right here. Um, you want to make sure any bubbles that get trapped kind of in this flat part here get up and out. Um, so specifically like right here, it likes to get stuck, as well as right here it likes to get stuck because there's a lip. Um, and you can see, I went down a little bit. Um, one thing you guys might notice when your car is running is it's going to produce kind of a foamy, um, maybe it's just my car, but it produces kind of a foamy um, like air bubble kind of consistency. And that is actually okay from what I've figured out. Um, I think it's just the water pump uh, impeller spinning. Um, if the engine's hotter, of course, it's going to actually just be boiling off water, um, which is why you kind of want to do this when it's cold. Uh, but... Yeah, so once you get that all done, um, you can see it's down on coolant. I'm going to go ahead, fill this up now. I'm going to put the cap back on, and then I'm actually run it up to temperature. Um, when you run it up to temperature, it's going to pressurize the system. We're going to make sure the fans still kick on. i got to put this temperature probe back in. Uh, I just had it right here earlier. Um, and then once we know the whole system is good, it should be able to bleed itself when it cools down. All right, guys, so I went ahead and ran this up to operating temperature, verified that my fans still kicked on when I wanted them to. Everything is running really, really good. Um, I do want to note if you do find a leak, I haven't found any, but if you do, be very careful because this whole system is now hot. Um, even the engine block is going to be pretty warm. Um, so you want to be careful. Uh, make sure you don't accidentally burn yourself, or uh, if it's a big leak, you don't want to get a bunch of it on your arm and then burn your whole arm. Um, but there you go guys, I'm going to go ahead and put on my front bumper, um, but that is pretty much it for this video. If you guys have any questions or comments, um, definitely drop a comment down below. I got this on eBay, I'll try to put a link to it, but eBay, sometimes they're there, sometimes they're not. Um, so I'll try to put a link down below if I can, um, and then if not, just search up uh, 300ZX, you know, whatever year you have, um, and then 3 row radiator. And they come in and out of stock, so just kind of keep your eyes peeled if you can't find it. Uh, but there you go, guys. I will see you guys later.